Hello and welcome to this special edition of the K418 Report, where we come to you from beautiful Pristina, the capital of Kosovo. I'm Army Sergeant Ricky Perez from the 11th Public Affairs Detachment. This week we bring you a story highlighting the 15-year presence of K4 in the Kosovo region, as well as coverage from Camp Bonsteel, where cavalrymen from 238 Cav put their skills to the test. For the best imagery from Multinational Battle Group East, please visit www.flickr.com slash mnbge. This month marks the 15-year anniversary of K4's presence in the Kosovo region. In this piece, we offer a glimpse of K4 and the United States' role in bringing peace and stability to the area. Before K4 came here, the uh, situation was very difficult. Uh, a lot of people, they were, they were leaving from here, escaping from, from the war. The only hope of people of Kosovo was the United States. It was a, a pretty rough five months here during the, the initial push into, into Kosovo and um, trying to uh, reestablish a safe and secure environment. And we were that initial um, force, much like the, the soldiers today, building up in Afghanistan, we were doing the, the same thing here. You think about our weapons control status, you think about that we had Bradleys and tanks, it was really a deterrent presence to, to establish a peace. Um, my platoon, and along with a, another group of individuals, were taken um, via Black Hawk helicopter, and we were airlifted into a civil disturbance. A rock from on, on a hilltop nearby was thrown and hit me in the, the Kevlar. They, they went and stated that the rock was about the size of a bowling ball and it um, went and cut my forehead open and I got five stitches. Bringing peace and stability to the Kosovo region was no simple task, but with help from the U.S. partnership, as you can see, progress became a reality. They helped the people of Kosovo. They are they got engaged in humanitarian action to help out and they help out all those people to come back to, to their properties, to their lands, so they can continue their lives. Once the peace was established, now we're maintaining the peace, but we're really providing stability to allow the institutions in Kosovo to stand up and one, to govern their own country, and then two, to join the nations of the rest of the world. And so, you know, we're very close to, I think, transitioning to even a, a different presence. NATO intervention has been the most crucial moment for the existence of Kosovo citizens at that time. The presence of NATO troops through these years in Kosovo was essential in creating a society that we have today, a democratic society with Western values. They have worked very well, and they have reacted any time there was a need, and I think that we still need their presence. I think that it is very important because it has brought stability to Kosovo and guaranteed a democratic system in Kosovo. The 15-year presence of Kosovo force has helped to bring peace and stability to a region with a population of almost 2 million people. Tired of sitting in your office weekend after weekend? Well, get out! Camp Bonsdale MWR offers weekly trips to various sites in Kosovo, as well as day trips to Skopje in the former Yugoslav Republic of Macedonia. Camp Bonsdale MWR. For the next trip destination, please check with your unit MWR representative. The Phantom Recon Troopers of 238 Cav performed various tasks while being graded during an Excellence in Cavalry testing event at Camp Bonsteel, Kosovo. The EIC testing helped leadership determine which cavalrymen in their troop currently have the most potential to lead. Cav Scouts are important to the Army as a whole because uh, we're, there, we're there at the tip of the spear and we're out there uh, in a traditional role to be able to find the enemy and to be able to determine where our maneuver forces should go. So basically, putting us in front is going to save the lives of those, uh, those coming forth behind us, uh, whether it's the infantry, uh, infantry or armored forces behind us. 
The testing spanned a total of three days, challenging the Cav Scouts mentally with tasks such as land navigation and physically with a 12-mile ruck march and a four-mile run. Face man! The Cav Scouts welcomed the opportunity to do what they do best. Well, any day you get to go out and uh, train is a good day. I mean, you're not sitting cooped up in the office, and it's my job. It's what I am in this army. It defines what I'm supposed to be. Cavalrymen must be proficient with their assigned weapons, as well as precisely calling in for artillery support when needed. One, five, over. One tank destroyed, estimated five casualties, over. The 238 Cav Scouts conducted the skill sets necessary to help them improve at their craft. Multinational Battle Group East soldiers stand in formation to celebrate America's birthday at Camp Bostil before enjoying a day full of fun activities. A multinational Battle Group East soldier prepares to insert a chest decompression needle into a simulated casualty during a combat lifesaver course at Camp Bonstil. Firefighters with the Scandrai Fire Station stand in front of their newly donated building from Camp Bonstil which will help in the support of the local community. A soldier with Multinational Battle Group East lifts a bar loaded with weights for a chance to enter the 1,000 pound club at Camp Bonstil. And that's it for K4 Through the Lens. I'm Army Sergeant Cody Barber. For more images, please visit the MMBG East page on Flickr. Kosovo Security Forces, or KSF, visited Camp Bonstil, Kosovo to witness soldiers in training while they performed life-saving measures to gain valuable knowledge on how to treat a casualty under fire. The training objectives are really twofold. Uh, first, we wanted to teach combat lifesaver, which is a bridge between point of injury care and then true medical intervention. And the second objective was really a train the trainer with the Kosovo Security Forces. We wanted to teach them how we uh, first plan the training and then we conduct the training in terms of a trauma lane, those critical life-saving interventions. Once they engage the enemy, then they're going to treat a casualty like you just saw. This is very important for KSF and we hope we will continue this cooperation with USK4 and we will take this experience to our units at Kosovo Security Force. Reporting from Camp Bonstil, Kosovo, I'm Army Sergeant Cody Barber. Becoming a naturalized U.S. citizen is a dream for many immigrants that serve in the military. Sergeant First Class Carlos Berger comes to us from Camp Bonstil, Kosovo, where two soldiers recognize that dream. Today was just kind of like whether it was dreaming or, or was it real because it's been so long, just been the same process. To me, it's, it's just kind of like an honor now that it's actually done with that, that now that I can, I can do what I want, I can, pr I can vote, I can get my, you know, my IDs and everything else all in order. It's just kind of an amazing thing. It's kind of like almost a new journey now. A new journey began for two Camp Bonstill soldiers, one in which they can call themselves U.S. citizens. I feel wonderful. I've been looking forward to this. I really have. Being in the military definitely helped and it expedited that process and Miss um, Hutchins was very helpful in making sure that I gained my citizenship that I did today. So where will one of these citizens go when they return home? Go to Disneyland actually. <laughs> From Camp Von Steel, Kosovo, I'm Army Sergeant First Class, Carlos Berger. If you have any photos or videos you'd like to submit, send them to mnbgeast at gmail.com. We want to thank you for joining us on this special edition of the K418 Report. From Pristina, Kosovo, I'm Army Sergeant Ricky Perez.